Let's look at some ways to apply the accounting entity assumption. Um, so example one, uh, the transactions and financial records of the business entity must be kept separate from the personal transactions and records of the owner. So let's take the owner of a clothing business took $200 out of the firm's cash register to buy some clothes for a party they were attending on the weekend. So we've got entity A, that is the owner. And we look at this nice box around them. That's a separate entity. And we've got entity B, the owner's clothing business. And what's happened is the owner has taken $200 from the clothing entity and used it uh, for their own personal expenses. Should this be recorded as an expense for the business? Well, clearly it shouldn't. I guess the question now is, well, what is it then? So we're going to say no, it's not recorded as a business expense, but it's like, it still happened. Something needs to be recorded about it. And what we say there is that is the owner. Do you remember the owner is the owner of this entity? They can take out money if they want, but it is not a business expense. It is a personal transaction of the owner. It's separate. And we're going to give that a name, particularly when we do the next chapter, which is drawings. That is the owner taking out drawings. That is actually different to a business expense. Example number two, the, this is where we've got to keep the transactions and financial records of one business separate from any other businesses the owner owns. So Sally Smith owns two businesses. She's got a hairdressing seller, we'll call that entity A, and a sports store. We'll call that entity B. The hairdressing salon has received a $700 phone bill, but unfortunately the phone's bank account is empty. So it's still got to pay the bill to keep the phone and the internet on. Um, so what Sally does instead is she transfers $10,000 from the bank account of the sports store over to the business, uh, the hairdressing business. And that way she can use the money to pay for the hairdressing salon's phone bill. Is this acceptable? The answer is no, the entity assumption has been breached. The sports store's bank account can't be used to pay for the salon's phone bill. Their transactions are separate. They should have separate accounting records, separate bank statements, separate financial reports. So that's a breach of the entity principle. Example three, each entity must prepare its own financial reports and statements rather than combining them together. So now we've got Sally. Sally owns a hairdressing salon, that's entity A. She owns a sports store, that's entity B. So to save time, she's got she's going to do the income statement for the hairdressing salon. We've got revenues here, expenses here, net profit, and the entity B is the sports store. It's got the same, different numbers, obviously, they're different entities. But she says, you know what? I own both of them. I'm just going to combine them into one. One giant income statement. Is that acceptable? Um, no. You've got to, or she has breached the entity assumption. Why? Because the financial reports of the two businesses can't be combined. Their financial records are separate. So what you should do is prepare an individual set of financial reports for each entity and they cannot be combined.